Hey, uh, everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Look, I'm not going to be long. I just want to talk to you about something. I'm watching some things happen, and I want to just make sure you guys are seeing this. It's not going to take long at all. I'm running a quick errand. Uh, and I'm going to get back and do some things I need to do. But uh, be careful. Watch. They've been take aiming at Kyrie and he's been slipping and moving Kyrie Irving um, but he definitely ruffles feathers because of some of the things he talks about and they, they they've been able to kind of dodge him by just labeling labeling him as a conspiracy theorist or a person who is easily misled by conspiracy theorists uh, but his late one of his most recent tweets has definitely set off something, especially with the whole anti-Semitic ire that's going on now because of Kanye. But uh, Kyrie uh, tweeted about a movie entitled, I believe, From Hebrews to Negroes, Black America Wake Up. Uh, I think it's the film that comes from the book. And he tweeted in support of it and the owner of the Nets which is uh, I think it's Jim Sy, um, an Asian guy he came out immediately condemned it and anybody that's in a position of power that has financial investment in a public realm that's tied to him is going to start distancing themselves and condemning uh, the sharing of that and it is considered to be anti-semitic because it identifies another group as the original Jews so what I want everyone to pay attention to is not the content you have to go out and find and read and study for yourself uh, things are governed and covered and in, 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 uh dictated and plastered and we don't own anything so we don't get to speak freely we don't get to say anything if we want to keep speaking uh at all and that's the point i'm making we don't own anything we don't control anything you are watching an economic blitzkrieg as far as uh kanye is concerned of what happens when you cross people who actually have power when you cross people who have know how to leverage their economic uh, anchors and forces and move, you're watching it in great detail. Now, let's see what happens with Kyrie. Um, it's interesting because I want to see how many historians are going to come out and share their input. Now, here's the problem I have. I haven't seen the mo movie and I haven't read the book. The title alone gives me an idea of what it is. And I've asked a few people, what's the basic premise of this, of this movie and this book. And it's a common theme, uh, black Hebrews. Okay. Anything that moves against the status quo is considered unacceptable. Now, no one in any position of power had a problem with the gods of Egypt. And this, this isn't the Ten Commandments that was made in the 50s, where you can sit up and say, okay, a lot of people were unaware. Uh, Egyptology has, hadn't reached its apex. That's absolutely no excuse for it now. But yet we got the gods of Egypt. And you know what I mean when I say we got the gods of Egypt. If you saw anything about the movie, saw the movie itself or whatever, you got to see it. Now, here's the difference. And then I'm done. The difference is we don't have any power to do anything about it. We haven't developed power. We haven't used any of our resources. We haven't developed the cohesiveness and the collectivity of mind to think and move in a way that is uh, collectively 
beneficial to the whole. We are highly individual minded. So we only think about ourselves. Am I eating? Am I going to eat? And then you, when you, that's how you get people like, uh, uh, Steve, uh, Harvey. That's how you get people like Roland Martin. That's how you get people who have no problem saying and doing things that are not beneficial to the collective because it's beneficial to them. And it's actually promoted in a large spectrum throughout the community and definitely in society. Hey, man, it's a, you better eat. Get yours. I get it. I'm, I, don't, I don't want anybody to starve. I don't want anybody to throw. So people who are aware of what lines they can cross and what lines they get, they can't cross. Cool. There's a difference in saying, I'm not going to cross that line because I know as soon as I cross that line, I'm going to be crushed. And the people that I'm trying to cross that line to help won't do a damn thing for me. I get it. I damn sure get it. Here's what I do say though. While you may not cross that line, don't push, don't put, don't turn around and push us off a cliff. Okay. I'm not going to go out and really spit truth. On every topic, I'm going to talk within a vein and a space that I feel comfortable, that I'm not going to ruffle the wrong feathers. There's a difference in saying, okay, I'm going to stay in a safe space and saying, shit, I throw my people off a cliff for enough money. That's the problem, is that individualized mindset has people who have the knowledge and the power and the capacity to help worrying about their dollar bill. Now, whether Kanye was misguided, whether Kanye is just stupid, whether Kanye is a genius and he's got this super plan, whatever y'all want to think, what I can say is he was one of those people who said what the hell was on his mind and he's paying for it. But see, that's the thing. We don't, nobody wants to be Kanye and that's what's happening with Kanye right now. He's being made an example of. It ain't about just what he said because he, 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 he approaches things and does things in a way that the average person in society is going to say it's un un unacceptable, regardless of whether it's true or not. It's unacceptable. So it's easy to sell him as just being off. So if they wanted to dismiss him, they could just say that he's straight crazy and throw it off. No, what they're doing is saying, OK, he's bold and he's too close to the edge of truth to stir up some stuff about things that people might want to go examine and look at. We can't have that. So what are we going to do? Make an example out of them. Don't cross this line. We will not be disrespected. We will not be disregarded. We will not be mishandled. We will not be misrepresented. Even if you feel like it's truth, you can't say it. It's absolutely not going to happen. Okay. The flip side of that is we know damn well who the ancient Egyptians were. It's way, we've got way too much work. We got Dr. John Hyman Clark, Dr. Yosef Ben Yakelin, uh, my, my man, uh, Dr. Tony Browder. We got way too many people that have put in Dr. Uh, Rashidi, uh, rest in power, um, and so many others that have gone to great lengths to teach us. So we know, we know about the Nile civilization. We know about the Kishites. We know about uh, the Kemites. We know Kemet and what, what, what was that. We know, and but we don't have the power to do anything about it. And we have to understand that that was a reinforcement of an erroneous idea and our children had to see it and then other children. And so that's this perpetuation of this false narrative that's being pushed that has heavy weight in the sense of our identity, our heritage. No, we're not all from uh, Northeast Africa. Uh, the vast majority of us are more than likely from the West Coast of Africa. Um, I've traced my roots to the East Side in Upper East North, so somewhere from uh, Kenya up. Uh, but that is irrelevant in the sense of the fact that it comes with no power. It doesn't matter where I can trace myself to until I have the power to sit up and say, no, I'm from there. That's my heritage. Don't touch it. 
you know, that's anti-comedic. That's anti uh Kishadish, that whatever you want to sit up and say is your identity or power. You don't have the power to execute the defense of it. That's the difference. And until we do that, it's just going to be the same old thing. On that note, look, I'm going to get out of here and go in and grab what I need to grab and get to what I need to do. But I had to share that with you. Look, this is uh, a fundraising weekend. Uh, show some love, show some support. Um, the organization's cash app handle is in the box. Uh, there's a link also for those of you who want to give through the link. Uh, you can give either way. Uh, but show some love, show support. If you believe in the work I've done over the last 30 years in research, in uh, the development of thought ideas that work towards uh, problem solving, uh, programs like Black Men Lead, Music is Life, the Black uh, Empowerment uh, Initiative, all of those things. I'm talking about 30 years of work. Before that was Facebook, before that was YouTube, before that was Twitter, before that was Instagram. I was doing this. So I'm going to ask that you show some love, show some support, and get ready. I'm going to start bringing some things that are really going to make you think. Um, along with the things that I've already been doing. Pay attention to some of those things that are on the business side of things. That's the way you empower yourself. Sitting up and having intellectual debates and having conversations are great for the attainment and accumulation of knowledge. But if you don't have something that you can do to use to build the source and the resources to where you can execute the practical principles in that knowledge to do something with it. It's, it's a way. So when I'm point, putting things out there about business, about opportunities, I'm doing it for a reason. Uh, take advantage of it when you can. But anyway, show some love, show some support. Go in that description box. Uh, like I said, you can give through the organization's cash app handle, which is what most people like to do. But if you want to click the link and give through uh, the uh, secure website, you can do that as well. But definitely show some love. On that note, I am out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. Peace.